Hey YouTube, it's Karen San Diego, and today I'm bringing you a tour of my bedroom, aka my daughter's nursery. But before we do that, make sure you stop and hit that red subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you can see more videos from me. So for those of you who do not know, I live in Brooklyn in a one bedroom apartment, so I do not have a designated nursery space and a separate bedroom for Ryan. Honestly, even if I did live in a two bedroom apartment, she wouldn't be in a separate bedroom at this point in her life anyway. She's a newborn, so she would be sharing our bedroom with us anyway. But for us, though, this one bedroom is where we're going to be for a little while. So we had to figure out a way to accommodate her while still having space for ourselves. So to give you an idea of how we have our room set up on this side of the room, we have Ryan's stuff. And then we split the room. So on this side of the room, at, once you get to our bed, it's our thing. So we have our bed. We have a chair here that we use for feeding Ryan. And then, focus. And then I have my desk for me to get ready in the morning, my makeup, etc. Um, this video is not really about this side of the room. So I'm going to take you over to Ryan's side of the room and start with the biggest piece in the room. So we're going to start with her crib. So this is her crib. We got her crib from Target. It's um, Carter's by Da Vinci and it's um, the crib that has the drawers on the bottom. So we use the drawers on the bottom for her pampers, extra pampers. We have some extra blankets and stuff down there. And right now she's too old to sleep in her crib. So we pretty much are just using the crib for storage. So in here we have her diaper caddy. Um, my breast friend, yeah, my breast friend, um, nursing pillow. I have this little pillow for her head that we, um, aren't using right now. Um, some, two toys. She can't play with toys yet, but I have it just because, um, newborns can see high contrast colors. So I have this to see, um, if she'll look at it. And she has been looking at it and tracking it when I move it around. And then I have her, um, baby book in there. Next to her crib, I have her piggy bank that she got for her for her baby shower, and I have her hatch baby rest. And for the hatch baby, um, this is just as you can see. Turn it back on. As you can see, this is her nightlight. Um, it also is a sound machine, but for some reason, Ryan isn't really crazy about sound machines. She doesn't care. Um, she actually sleeps better when I don't have the sound machine on. So, yeah. Over here. I have her changing table and honestly I don't really use this changing table I change her over there on the bed and it's just because that's just convenient for me I'm so always sitting on the bed with her this um however does come off it's a just like a, t a attachment on top I had thought that I was going to use it but I never use this thing so if I really decide that I want some more storage space I can get rid of this top part and use the top here for storage inside of her drawers though I store on the top I have her bibs and burp cloths um, bibs and burp cloths I have um, her bows and I'm really crazy about bows so I have a lot of bows in here um, her socks her only pair of shoes <laughs> cute little vans I have these are like her mittens so she doesn't scratch her face which I actually don't use anymore because I want her to be able to learn how to grab things which she's been doing really well with and I find that when I have the mittens on her hands she isn't able to do that so it's I feel like it slows down her development so I only use these for like the first week or two of her life and I have completely stopped using them now and then back here we have baby hats, but her head is still so small that none of these hats fit. So I have gotten no use out of those yet. Then in the next draw, focus. In the next draw I have her clothes. So it's not perfectly folded. It's not like a Pinterest draw or anything. But um, this is her preemie and newborn onesies and sleepers. And then this is all zero to three months. And then in that bottom draw. I have, once again, not perfectly folded. This is real life, y'all. This is not a fake YouTube slash Pinterest um, room tour. This is real life. I use all this stuff. This is all her swaddle blankets. Um, swaddle blankets. Swaddles, like the swaddle me and, um swaddles. And these are like Halo sleep sacks. Ugh. Halo sleep sacks. That's a tongue twister. Ouch. Then over here, I have her diaper genie. Um, for all her stinky diapers in there. 
um then i have this cart that i got from target on the floor oh, i opened diaper genie and it stinks in there y'all that thing really does trap in the smell because i was not smelling anything until i opened this up throw her diaper in there like jesus oh my god um in here i have um okay so then i got this cart from target and I just use it to stash any of her little things that I might need. On the top row, I have my breast pump. And then, like, little part, like um, parts for the breast pump. The flanges and um, everything are in are being sterilized right now. But I just have, like, an extra, an extra bottle for it. I have a haka. I have some boobies, nipple butter, some lanolin, some more pieces for the breast pump. The breast pump itself and then here i have just some lotion for her some um gas drops gripe water boogie wipes and this is my belly band to help with postpartum recovery which i'll talk about in a different video on the next shelf i have more first aid stuff so some butt paste some vitamin d drops a medicine dispenser all this like random stuff back here i have pacifiers some desitin and then down here some refills for the diaper genie so this is the most important part of the video right here when it comes to co-sleeping because this is where she actually sleeps so ryan sleeps in her halo swivel sleeper halo swivel sleeper bassinet hey what's it called yeah, Halo Swivel Sweeper Bassinet, and she doesn't um, sleep directly in it because the mattress that comes with it is really hard and she hates it. I tried buying um, the infant insert for it and she hated that too, but the only way that she'll actually sleep in here is with the Docatot in it and then she'll sleep in this. Now, I know that the Docatot was not approved for overnight sleep. I am aware of this. I will show you why I feel comfortable with it in a second. Um, but yeah, so when that's it. When I'm on my bed, I can just pull push this down so this thing bends like this, so I can just kind of bend, reach her and get her without having to get out of bed, so it's really convenient. Down here, there's a couple features. I don't know what this feature means, but this one, when you press it, the bed the thing vibrates. This one plays some like lullabies. This one turns up the volume, and this one is a nightlight. So, like, yeah. So, I sleep on this side of the bed. My husband sleeps on that side of the bed so that I can reach her easily at night in case she needs to feed or change her diaper or whatever the case may be. Oh, yeah, and over here... And um, the reason I like this swivel sleeper, Halo Bassinet swivel sleeper, is because it moves so that it is really close to my bed. So if it was a stationary bassinet, I would not be able to get in and out of bed without coming all the way to the edge of the bed. But because it moves, I can just move it like this and have a path that way. I can also, it says swivel, so it swivels like that. Ooh. So it was like that. So then now I can have a completely clear walkway to the bed. I can move it again this way. That gives me even more room to just come off the bed. And then um, this way it's further away. But when it's this far, I don't um, feel comfortable at night. I like her to be close enough for me to be able to, like I said, just push this side down to get to her. So all you have to do is then just swivel it back. And now it's right up against the bed. So if I push it down, I can access it without having to get up at all. I have her Frida Baby humidifier. Last thing I have in this room that I think is very important, this is a major key, is the outlet sleep sock. This is the actual sock right here, but this is the base station. Um, and the point of the sock, in case for you who do not know, this sock goes on your baby's foot and it monitors their oxygen and heart rate. Um, it's really good to help prevent SIDS. It will notify you if your baby stops breathing or if they're breathing or heart rate is irregular. So you just put the sock on the baby and it connects um, through Wi-Fi, um, through Bluetooth, through the set to the base station. You press that down. Um, this light, once it's connected, will either turn green or it'll turn red if something is wrong. So at night, you can look over at it. If it's green, everything's okay. If it's red, something is wrong, you need to check the baby. And to go with the Owlet sleep sock, we also have the Owlet camera, which coincides with the Owlet app on our phones. 
So on our phones, we have the Owlet app that goes along with the Owlet camera. As you can see, the camera is pointed directly at the bed here, and you could be able to access this camera no matter where you are because it's working off of the Wi-Fi in our home. Also, with the Owlet Smart Sock, if um, right now Ryan is not hooked up to the sock, but if she was here, it would show her heart rate and right here it will show her oxygen level i have that on her at night when she's sleeping just because if at all anything at all was to happen if she was to stop breathing regularly or her heart rate was to slow down or speed up the base station would turn red and have a really loud alarm to wake us up so that we knew something was wrong and as first time parents we find it really helpful to have the sock um, I thought when I first got it that I'd be checking it like obsessively, but we really don't. Um, it only has ever gone off one time, uh, and, and blinked red and we were able to jump up and check on her and make sure everything was okay. And it gives us such peace of mind to be able to sleep at night knowing that we have an extra set of eyes on her, making sure if she turns over and rolls over in her sleep that, um, it would be picked up that she's not breathing properly or if anything at all was to go wrong, we have this to be, to make sure she's okay. And that, that also adds to why I feel comfortable having her sleep in the docketot, even though it's not sleep approved, because the reason it's not sleep approved is because of the suffocation risk. But with the owlet, I feel like if she was to roll, um, to roll over onto her face in the docketot, it will let us know that her breathing was irregular. However, um, however, like most baby products, the docketot is not super approved. This is not a medical device. So if you do not feel comfortable, then you do not do it. This is what I choose to do with my child. In these double doors, this is mine and my husband's closet. Ryan's closet is right outside the door. Let me show you. So this is Ryan's closet here. This was my linen closet, but I converted it into her closet. That's a big tip to convert any space that you can in order to accommodate the baby. I have her closet in here. So this this closet used to have shelves like this one because it was the linen closet, but I just put these two rods in here and made it into her closet. And then I have these little dividers that go from newborn all the way up to toddler. Um, so I can hang her clothes that don't get folded up in the closet, like her jackets and things like that. So I have up top, that's some um, extra nipple pads. I have wipes. I have more diapers in bigger sizes. Her clothes. I have this bin with miscellaneous things like towels and washcloths. Her clothes. Her laundry is down there. And then on the door hanging, I have this um, like over the door storage thing that I just keep some like diaper samples, some extra wipes, some toiletries, all hanging on the door so that it just adds the space. Because if I didn't do that, that would have been empty wasted space that I could have been using for storage. Yeah. Okay. So the main piece of advice I have when it comes to a bedside nursery is just making sure that you utilize every inch of space in the best way possible. And that means like having a crib like this one that has storage on the bottom so that you're not just like having a, a place for a baby to sleep, but there's also extra storage and using a changing table that has drawers and using, um, if you have a bed, my bed has drawers on the bottom already for like our act this bed. But um, if I didn't and my bed was like lifted, I would have put storage underneath the bed even more like I would have put the bed on a lift and put drawers underneath there like I did back in college that also would be a good way to do it so let me know if this video was helpful let me know if there's any products in this video that you'd like to see a review for because I can definitely start doing product reviews because I buy everything so <laughs> I have a hell of a lot of products that I can review for you and until then I'll see you on my next video